let us now apply this to a heat engine. I will be sketching here diagram for a heat engine. So let's say uh, a gas turbine or a Brighton cycle. We have here a compressor. Here we have state one. Through the compressor. And then we have a combustion chamber where we are providing heat, combustion chamber. After this, we reach the maximum temperature and pressure. So this is state two. We reach state three where maximum temperature and pressure. We can put here a gas turbine. This will lead to state four. Okay. So here in the compressor, we are providing work that we will be calling work of the compressor. In the combustion chamber, we are providing heat that we will be calling QN. And in the turbine, we are having work out that we'll be calling work of the turbine. Now what's important to look to see is that if we stop here, we don't have a cycle, right? We start from state one to state two to state three and then to state four, but we are not coming back to state one. So therefore this is not a cycle. The only way to build a cycle is to bring point four to point one. And to do this, we just saw that we have to reject heat by using a cooler. And this cooler, its role is to pay a tax in terms of heat to the universe, in terms of Q out. It's the only way to continue this process and have a cycle, okay? So now what we know is that each component here or device in the cycle is an open system, okay? For example, a compressor is an open system, inlet one, exit two. But now if we take all the cycle as a system, so if we do this, we can see that there is no mass crossing the boundaries of the system. Everything is inside. There is only energy crossing the energy, the boundaries of the system. And here we have work in, work of the compressor, work out, work of the turbine, Q in in the combustion chamber, and Q out in the cooler. So we can assume this as a closed system, and therefore we can use the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. First law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is telling us that the variation in energy of our system is equal to the exchange between heat and work. So Q net minus the work net. Knowing that Q net is equal to what? It's equal to Q in minus Q out. Okay, so this is the heat difference between the heat we are providing at the level of the combustion chamber minus the, the heat that we are rejecting here, okay? And the work net is equal to the work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor. Okay, so meaning that now, since this is a cycle, this term, the variation in internal, uh, in energy, sorry, of the system, will give you zero if you go all around the cycle, right? Because for example, if it will be delta E2 minus, the, E2, sorry, minus E1, E3 minus E2, E4 minus E3, 
and then you close the loop. So this term is zero. So this means that we have, in this case, Q net is equal W net, or we have simply W of the turbine minus W of the compressor should be equal to Q in minus Q out. Okay? So this is what we reached so far. And remember that this term here is the work net. Now let us define something very important for a heat engine, which is the thermal efficiency. How efficient is this cycle in, in a thermodynamical point of view? So thermal efficiency. We'll call it eta. So by definition, the thermal efficiency will be equal to what? So what do we want to maximize in a heat engine? We want to maximize the work, okay? But more than the work out, we need to maximize the work net, okay? So therefore, the efficiency is equal to the work net. Over what? What are we paying for this work to be done? We are paying QN. So over QN. We said that the work net here is equal to QN minus Q out. So this gives us that QN minus Q out over QN. And this tells us that the thermal efficiency for this cycle for a heat engine is equal to 1 minus Q out over QN. Okay? So, which is fine for us. But just wait a second. We just said that there is no way to have a heat engine if we don't reject this Q out. So this means that this Q out cannot be zero. You cannot design a heat engine if you don't reject this heat out to the surrounding, to the universe, and you have to pay this tax. Since Q out is never zero, this term actually is never zero. So meaning that the efficiency, this one, this term is never zero. So, so this tells us that the thermal efficiency is never equal to one, or the thermal efficiency is never equal to 100%. This is a very strong statement because this is telling us that when we design a heat engine, there is no way for us to design a heat engine with 100% efficiency. There is no way for us to design a heat engine where all the heat here, QN, will be converted into a work net. Whatever we do, we have to pay a tax to the universe, and this is represented by Q out. There is no 100% efficient heat engine. Obviously, this will lead to another question. If we can never reach 100% efficiency in terms of heat engines, what is the maximum efficiency in this case we can hope for? And this will be discussed when we'll be introducing the concept of Carnot efficiency. At this stage, the only thing that we know is that Calvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics prevents the design and the construction of any heat engine which is 100% efficient. So the formal statement of Calvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics is the following. It is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle
on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir reservoir and produce a net amount of work so this is the formal statement so here it's important to look at the details it is impossible this is a very strong statement like it's rare that we have statement like this or laws in physics where they really tell you it is impossible so this puts a real restriction okay on our ability to design and construct uh, heat engines so but it's not impossible for any device no it's more specific it's device that operates on a cycle and you cannot create an engine that runs on a cycle, operates on a cycle, if you have a single heat reservoir. And basically, you claim that you can provide an amount of work, a net amount of work. Okay? So, let's sketch this. So, this means that I'm creating, I would like to sketch it this way for the second law. I have a heat engine so this is my cycle or heat engine I'm claiming that this heat engine is receiving heat from a reservoir of temp heat or temperature let's say T high this is T high 2000 degrees C or whatever providing heat Q into my heat engine and my heat engine is giving me work net if I sketch it this way this represents a violation of the second law of thermodynamics Kelvin Planck statement it's because here I'm claiming that my heat engine is connected to only one single reservoir and is producing heat so basically the only way for this to be possible is to connect it with the reservoir at a lower temperature and pay our tax to the universe with the Q out now I have the heat engine connected to one two heat reservoirs and now I'm and now I can produce a net amount of work okay so the absence of this will represent a violation of the second law of thermodynamics if you think about a car for example it's a heat engine so it's telling you that you have to reject your combustion gases but more than this they have to be at a higher temperature than the surrounding temperature because you have to have this Q out otherwise there is no way for you to run your engine now the only thing that I like to add to, add to the statement is it is impossible yet because in science we never know several laws were supposed to tell us that things are impossible and they ended up wrong okay so so far it is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and produce a net amount of work